What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today I want to talk about what Pokemon may look like on the Nintendo Switch. First of all, I'm a little under weather. Sorry, you gotta hear my voice like this, but video good news come out. I gotta make it, it's a thing, great. So I'm sure a lot of us have seen the footage of what Pokemon would look like on the Unreal Engine when we saw Incineroar fighting the Salandit. But I'm gonna be honest with you, that is completely unrealistic of expectations. The Nintendo Switch isn't that powerful of a console. That was generated on a fantastic PC and it looks absolutely gorgeous, but the Nintendo Switch doesn't have that much firepower. So I wanted to explore the ideas and kind of give you guys a good idea on what it would look like for the Nintendo Switch. I'm actually going to be doing this using the Citra emulation software. Now this is a piece of software that emulates the 3DS and the current ROM that I'm having in here is Pokemon Star, which is a fan made game, uh, but it's going to give us pretty similar results. Also, you're going to notice that most of your screen is black and there's a tiny little 3DS in the middle. That's because this is the actual resolution of the 3DS. Assuming that you're watching this on a monitor in 1080, that can display 1080 pixels wide. The entire resolution of the 3DS is measured at 400 by 240 pixels wide. Now, instead of us just standing here in this piece of grass, let's go into a battle. Also, in this fan-made game, there's a ghost lily in the background. I know about it, don't worry about it. That is the actual resolution of the 2DS. So tell you what, first things first, let's get rid of this 2DS on top of here. Boop. And let's take this top screen and let's make that full screen. Let's also move this bottom screen out of the way. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, I'll be honest with you, this resolution, it looks pretty garbage. Also, there's a mod installed, that way there's no black lines. The black lines make it even more atrocious, trust me. However, the really interesting thing is, is that the resolution of the sprites is significantly higher than most other things in this world. And it's all coded into the game. So I'm gonna boost this up to double its original resolution, to 800 by 480. And immediately, everything becomes a lot clearer. Let's hope it didn't crash. Nope, it crashed. So during that battle, the emulator crashed, so let's go ahead and try that out again. And a Fioni. Well, Fionis aren't normally found in the wild, but heck, it'll do. Great. So this is the original native resolution of 400 by 240, but if we boost that up because all the sprites are coded in the game in a higher resolution, it already looks significantly clearer. It doesn't look as pixelated around any of the Pokemon here or the actual trainer sprites, which is great. Now the crazy part is, that isn't as far as we can go. We can actually upscale the models into as high as 4K resolution. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up to 1440p, and wow. All of them look now crystal clear. The only thing that may seem pixelated is the actual textures on the Pokemon. And you may see some actual lines and things like that that look a little blurry, but other than that, it looks pretty fantastic. Also, you may have noticed these little black bars on the sides, that's because this game is not perfect 16x9. Boop. Let's make it 16x9. We're barely going to notice the difference. Now we have a beautiful full screen image here. And that's what the Pokemon look like in regular Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and Sun and Moon, and this fan-made game of Pokemon Stars, in an upscale resolution for the models at 1440p. You know, heck, let's push it. Great, we're now in 4K resolution. It's, it's a little too crisp, if you ask me. Now, I know this video is what Pokemon is going to look like on the Switch, and not what do upscale models look like on the 3DS. So let's go ahead and let's get one scene that we really love and let's do some work here. I spent about like six hours editing stuff, but anyways, it, it was like one second here for you. Okay, so first things first, let's start taking out the UI. We're gonna take care of that little lower screen in the bottom right hand corner. We're gonna remove the balls. We're gonna neuter Eevee. <laughs> And now all of the UI is gone. All of the Pokemon stats and everything else from both sides of the screen. The first step that we're gonna do toward getting this all up and going is we're gonna center this image a little bit more. Bring the trainer over to the left hand side, keep the Pokemon a little bit more center, and then we're gonna fill in the right hand side using a Photoshop content aware. Now let's start filling in the background. First, the grass. And uh, I chose this image just based on Google. I kind of like the pattern of the dirt and the grass. We're going to take that and we're going to fit that into the position that it was previously in. Well, where the grass was previously held. Now we're going to do a little bit of color correction, get it looking nice. There we go. 
Now it's matching the kind of nighttime theme going on. Let's bring the sprites back on top of the grass. Beautiful. And then also definitely can't forget about their shadows. Fantastic. Next, we're gonna start working on the tall grass behind the Pokemon. And uh, we're gonna do a couple of different layers at a couple different levels. I'm gonna bring in this piece of grass. I also brought uh, the trainer forward. This piece of tall grass right here, I'm gonna clone that a few times and then different resize it and shape it all over the place. And boom. Now, obviously it sticks out really, really bad and we're gonna do a little bit of color correction, bring it down a little bit to make it kind of match the whole nighttime theme going on. Great. Now it kind of blends in with the background a little bit, even though definitely we still see the super pixelated grass behind there. Uh, so let's throw in some hedges. And uh, obviously we're gonna need to do a lot of color correction in that. We're gonna bring that down in brightness a lot and we're gonna blend it in with everything going on and fantastic. You barely even know that it's there. The last thing that's really standing out is that really pixelated dark brown boulder. I'm gonna replace that with a much nicer boulder. Boom. Yeah, that's a nice boulder. So now we need to start working on the background. And it said that the new Pokemon games are going to be held in Spain. So I thought, let's get a little crafty, let's put some Spain up back there, and that's completely unrealistic. Do keep in mind that we are still in handheld mode, best case scenario, gonna get 1080, 30 frames per second, most likely it's gonna be downscaled to 720. So because of that, I don't think we're gonna be getting super hyper-realistic images like that. So, actually right here, I found a city screenshot from Minecraft, and the pixelation kinda works with everything going on, but it doesn't fit the overall theme. However, I found this beautiful grassy field, and now everything kinda comes together a little bit more. So that could be one image of what it would be like fighting a wild Pokemon in the wild. So let's take a step back, and now I want to focus on what the UI might look like a little bit more. And by UI, I mean the Pokemon user interface. For this, I'm actually going to be bringing in the original video of the, well, while the camera's panning around and stuff, just to have a little bit of motion going on. So there's essentially three areas that we need to incorporate here. Our Pokemon's information, the opponent Pokemon's information, and the bottom screen. First, let's focus on our Pokemon. If we were to put it in the top left corner using the original fonts, well, it looks super, super pixelated. And now that we have this beautiful resolution to work with, let's update the fonts. Now that's a beautiful font right there. That's actually the same font that's used in the title on the Pokemon trading card game. We have the HP there. Below the HP bar, we have the actual HP number. We have the experience counter. We have the sex of the Pokemon and the level of the Pokemon itself. Let's bring in the opponent Pokemon's information and fantastic. The next thing we need to do, we need to bring in the balls and I'm gonna be placing the balls right below our Pokemon, of course. Boop. And after looking at this, it kind of looks out of place, so I kind of revamped the style a little bit, made the ball smaller, moved over the experience bar, and it looks pretty tight right there. Twight like a twiga. Our next step from here is how we're gonna be implementing the bottom screen, and uh, what we're gonna be doing for the Pokemon, the bag, the run, and the fight, the four staples of every single Pokemon game, the four options. And I decided to go for taking the left Joy-Cons and putting them on the left side of the screen. And then in theory, when someone were to select fight, it would then come up with all the fight options. But then I realized that the longest Pokemon move is the menacing Moonrays Maelstrom. Maelstrom, whatever Lunala does. So obviously that's not gonna fit there. So I decided to bring it to the bottom right. And uh, that looks really nice right there. The only thing is when it's not in attack mode with full size names, well, it kind of looks just out of place right there. So I decided that maybe we should switch up that design and bring it, try to align it a little bit better and put it all the way to the right hand side. Again, it still just doesn't look right. Then I decided let's bring it down more. With these down here at the bottom, it looks a lot cleaner. It doesn't take up any of the screen. And then I thought, well, maybe they're not gonna have the buttons there for those commands. And then it would look just like that. You would come up and then you would choose with the left joystick what you wanna do. You would select the thing and you'd be good to go. Instead of the more Pokemon Stadium style where you would have to choose one button for one move, etc., etc. I was thinking about keeping that in there, but then it seems like that was done because you are doing two players on the same screen. And when you're doing that, you don't want the other person to see the move that you're choosing, so you're gonna be able to select it without actually pulling up the moves. However, when you're doing one player, you're probably going to want to do a lot of button mashing for the A button. 
So because of that, you kind of want a nice fluid motion, be able to just jump through it, mashing the A button. So uh, guys, I want to know what you think on some mock-ups on what you think the Pokemon UI and the Pokemon themes overall would look like for the Switch. Again, this is a very, very humble, realistic interpretation of what it would look like without getting all crazy on the Unreal Engine and things like that. So guys, leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.